Greetings from Cuyahoga Falls. My name is Jehovah. Welcome to War of Rights. It's Saturday and we're hanging out with the UEC. Special thank you go out to everybody in the UEC for letting us record these fantastic events. Today is something special. We have a battalion event, so we're going to have large numbers of men moving as one body. It'll be exciting to watch. Also, special guest today with me, once again, retired Major Schimmel Finnig. Hello, Schimmel. Hello, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be here. And hello, everyone watching us. Yeah, thank you to everybody in the live chat. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we do these on Saturdays. And so we have live uh, events for the Twitch. So now where we're fighting at this point is the Bloody Lane. A quick little history lesson. This is uh, mid-morning. So in the distance right over there, you can see the Dunker Church and the Mama Farm on fire. In the distance on my camera, you see the Miller's Cornfield and the Miller Farm in the background. That left side being the Hagerstown Turnpike. Of course, the Bloody Cornfield there. The North Woods directly in front. And now these are the East Woods over there and the West Woods that way. So this was the center of Robert, e's, uh, Robert E. Lee's line uh, on that day, held by Longstreet, D.H. Hill's men in this bloody lane. And uh, eventually the Yankees were able to get around on the left-hand side here, flank the Confederates. But uh, Anderson's men uh, of the 8th Alabama, which Schimmel was a part of, of course, led, and the uh, 8th Florida, among others, flooded into the lane and caused enough confusion that orders got confused and they actually ordered a retreat out of the bloody lane uh, back toward the Piper Farm, which you can see in the distance. And that gave the uh, Union the, this part of the field. Only suicide attacks from D.H. Hill's men kept the 52nd New York, 2nd Delaware, and units like that from completely breaking uh, through Robert E. Lee's center at this point of the field. So, Shimmel, I know we're going to do a battalion event, but typically, strategically, how would you approach this battlefield? All right. Um, from a Confederate perspective, it's, it's really limited to what you actually can do properly. Um, you, you see you have that oversized uh, double fence line with this channel in the, in the center between, the, between these two lines. It's almost, it's almost like a World War I situation, you know, we have those trenches. And as like in World War I, your main goal is to hold the enemy back um, on these, these fences over there, on this double fence line. For, uh, most of the time, one unit is taking up positions over there, covering this, this square. Here's, of course, a good position to hide your unit, for example. And here's a very good position to defend against uh, an onslaught. Uh, most of the time, you have another company covering this part of the line over here. Mostly in, in, these, in this position over here or over, over down there. It's a good hiding spot as well. The problem is the CSA has a large number of air, uh, has, has a large area to defend. And that's where the Union strategy sets in. The Union strategy mostly relies on making one big punch through a certain area, you see. The Union picks themselves one area where they want, would like to punch through it and they take almost uh, three-thirds of their strength and punch that line as hard as they can, as quick as they can. Confederates are overstretched and they might punch through. Then their main goal is to set themselves, uh, uh, let's say, yeah, establish themselves over there at the main point and cap it through. Because it's really, really hard to counterattack there, but not impossible, as we've seen uh, before on Jehovah's channel. So. It's an interesting map with a lot of opportunities for both sides. Usually, I prefer this map playing as Union because you can decide where to strike. And at Confederates, it's going to be confused uh, at some point because you have to react very quickly. And time is of the essence and such things. So, yeah, interesting and bloody. Absolutely. And the clock is beginning to get to the 40-minute mark. Again, being a battalion... Uh, event. We don't know exactly when the guys will get started. But uh, one of the things that I've always uh, liked about this, probably one of my favorite battlefields, this and the Dunker Church. It's one of the oldest ones as well. <clears throat> but uh, these rocks over here on the right-hand side of the Union uh, area next to this large tree, the Union really like to get in and amongst these rocks and uh, play havoc on the Confederates. But a lot of times in Schimmel, I've seen you guys do this whenever you were leading the 8th Alabama, We'll get over in this uh, cornfield on the left-hand side of the battlefield. 
and really stop a lot of that union activity over there. It's very effective. And the yeah. Confederates have moved. Of course, it's depending uh, on the unit. Uh, of course, with Mighty 88, it's no issue. But we shall see. So the Confederates actually out in the middle of the field here. Actually, what we're seeing here is a, is a usual 18th North Carolina strategy, taking on positions right there at the top of the hill. And um, let's say, take a position before the Union can, you see, stopping them right in their tracks. It's something you can do. Sometimes works, sometimes <coughs> doesn't work. Everyone has their different approach. My approach on this map would be more defensive. Others would be uh, more offensive. It's depending. Yeah, I fought with Captain Carroll many times, and a lot of times he'll get his men right into this cornfield where they're facing into the open field and just wait for the Union to show themselves. And it can be bloody. Well, I, I think they're going to arrange uh, the better situation to make it more evenly matched. So no one's firing until a special signal is given and all kinds of arranged themselves, etc, etc. I think CFA is only going to uh, shoot um, uh, if the Union is in position. Let's say they wait until Union is in position for firing. By the way, I'm fine for that English. I'm improving. <laughs> All right, there comes the, oh, there comes the CSA. And the CSA had their guns out, the Union finally marching into formation here. And we'll see if the Confederates throw some shells at them. You can see the Confederates in the distance. All right, they're waiting. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to do some fence shooting here. I think Union will be first in the line. And the Confederates are moving off to the right. They're taking aim. All right. Oh, oh my god, a devastating fire coming in. 18th North Carolina Tar Heels decimated in one shot. And now it's the Confederates' turn. Yeah, it's the return, boys. Confederates not as effective as the Union with that first volley. And your Confederates have to uh, had to adapt really, really quickly and had no not much time to uh, oh. aim. My God, Hopefully. 18th North Carolina getting totally blown away here. Everyone pretty much got, is getting blown away right now. It's counterbody, but I guess Union has it this time. At least in this situation. First company taking heavy casualties, sir. Uh, first is non existent anymore. Oh my god, another huge volley from the Union. <coughs> You heard it, they cannot see, the Confederates cannot see through that smoke. I don't believe the Union can either. Hey. Yeah, but I guess hey. Union knows where CSA is. Let's take a look at their side, if they can see it. Yeah, Union can yeah, see more clearly for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of those rounds, a lot of those rounds hitting the dirt, Confederates, almost completely wiped out here. You can see why they chose that sunken lane instead of this fence line. <laughs> but one thing you have to acknowledge, Greenberg usually lives longer than me. <laughs> He's doing something right. <laughs> He has a really good survival rate. <laughs> and we've got the uh, Confederates moving away, leaving their dead behind. They have to. There are a lot of bodies. Look at them. It's a massacre. Oh, 
Right, that's really not suited for shit, man. <laughs> Union actually marching into the field now. This would be historical. This is these are the actual fields by the roulette lane that they came into this area. Uh, historically, in the back of the retreat in CSA. I don't think so. And historically, what ended up happening were the Union actually sent a brigade at a time down against the sunken lane instead of sending all their forces in at once. A strategy they also did at Fredericksburg <clears throat> later, which never pays off for the Union throughout the history of the war. Uh, eventually, they wise up and send full divisions. But it would take a while. Yeah, sorry, go for it. No, I was just going to say it would take a while for the for the Union strategy to change throughout the war. Yeah, I was just going to say we all know from our history of video games that sending in waves of men is always the best idea <laughs> to, kill, to kill someone. <clears throat> but actually, so yeah, same in reality. Sending in waves isn't the best way, usually. Yeah, you got. You want to break through the line, you got to send the whole army at once. Yeah. And speaking of armies, the Union still has one here. The Confederates still trying to get their men back in after a <laughs> devastating fire from the Union, who are now standing on the bodies of dead Confederates. <laughs> That seems like a new army is taking shape. Where is that coming from? Und jeder setzt sich auf meine Frau ein, lässt ich hab's für länger. Viel Spaß. So, right, both sides have been forced and stuff. Yep, Confederates looking good again. Union has a good position over there. But CSA position is not good, as uh, is, is not bad as well. Many people are shouting all this. Alright, they're getting up to the fence line now. Fire by company. Fire by company. Fire by ready. 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 We know. Hi guys, you need to aim a little bit higher. Fire! Hopefully you guys They're up hill, aim higher. Yeah, they're in a good spot. So, so like, right about just ahead. Just ahead. Well, that's they're the only thing they're showing, pretty much. This is the problem it's with Eddie Lane in the real life, is that they have real cover behind. Fire! 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 Alright, guess where we're getting. Take aim! Let me on this. Fire! So, both armies exchanging fire here. Union out in the middle of the field, no protection. Actually, I have. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Confederate perspective, you have the high ground. And uh, you can't see everything of them. Oh no, they, I think they changed position now. You have a better look at them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're all now exposed. Now they're really open by Confederates are entrenched. And again, this is historical. This is where the uh, Union line would have been at that time. Part of it. We're creating a historical scenario. Yeah, they may be creating a historical scenario by accident, or they may be doing it on purpose. I'm not really sure, but this would be historic on this part of the field. Of course, the Union would have been lined up all the way around this fence line, and coming in a brigade at a time over this hill. And ultimately, like I said before, it was actually the confused orders of about face 
that caused the uh, bloody lane to empty of Confederate soldiers. Yeah, the Confederates can't see through the smoke on this battlefield, so as they shoot, the smoke is pushing away from them toward the Union, and it just creates a perfect smoke screen that they can't see anything at all. Whereby from the Union side, it's, it's also very smoky because the smoke is coming back in their face, but at least it, their own fire does clear very quickly. Yep. Confederates... <clears throat> Uh, moving to the right. I, I wouldn't say withdrawing to the right. It was my first intention. I think they're just changing position. You can see rounds coming in, hitting the fence line. We were stationary for most of that. That's pretty After embarrassing. Hold, company, yeah. After hold, you may fire at first. Fire! Fire! Oh. Left Comes the answer. Yeah, come snow. And the Union moving off to their right now. But not rushing around like crazy. They're doing it in formation, under fire. Very dedicated soldiers here. See, a lot of those Confederate just rounds not hitting anything. Just 50 second New York things. And the Union getting ready for another volley. So a large volley by the Union. Oh. <coughs> Confederate flag going down. And they're on the move again, moving around to the right. They're doing a dance. Both units moving to their respected rights. But the Confederates have reached the corner. Oh, that's going to be interesting. 18th North Carolina, Sergeant Reinfeld coming around the right-hand side, leading the Tar Heels up the road. The Union are going to have to answer to this. They're getting flanked at the moment. Said you're to you what they're doing. And Frank getting out of the smoke. He sees him now. Let's see if they can perform a left wheel. Well, Colonel Frank's got him moving over to the right, so they're leaving the area. And the point of contention is alive on this map. It is. So now doing a uh, by files left and coming straight down the hill directly into the lane. So this is interesting. I like this. But he's actually stopped them short. He's just turned them uh, parallel to the Confederates. Confederates doesn't even blink. They just keep firing and keep pouring volley after volley into the Union line. Union completely exposed now. Call down. Captain Livington trying to keep his boys in line here. Here we go. Oh. A lot of Union bullets hitting in uh, different directions, but I didn't see a lot of Confederates falling yeah, down. Oh, honestly, actually, more. It, it hits more defense than the actually men behind the fence. I think I, I saw two or three uh, deaths, that, that bodies dropping on the Confederate side. These, uh, these groups trying to get away from that smoke is what it looks like here. Definitely can see better now than we could before. Confederate's yeah. about to throw another volley into the Union. Yeah, a lot of those shots going wild as well. They are quite a distance away from each other. These guns are effective at this range. You can see blue bellies laying on the ground. Group of hobbies, can you move the private to the left? 
Oh, AG. Go on. Yeah. Right here. Over here, on the left. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, move, back. move back. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oof. That Go fire on. was effective. 51st yeah. in the center, taking a large, large casualties in that one. You know, I could see how companies like the 8th Alabama and the 8th Florida could be frustrated with this kind of play. Uh, it doesn't give them the freedom of movement that they normally enjoy in the battle. Now, the whole Union line coming directly toward the Confederates now in formation. Yeah, but, uh, it's really a, a different kind of battle, you see. It's, um, it has another quality, you see. There you have no need to play like this way. It's just standing there and shooting. It's relaxing. It's a special event as well. It's no stress either. You know, it's it's yeah. more of just a uh, just a good time, and it looks fantastic. I mean, that that's kind of the whole point. Ooh, large fire coming in. Second Delaware taking the most of that one. You know, when your strategy relies on moving fast, changing positions, camp on different angles, you know, it's effective, but it's always, um, let's say, a, a bit more stress for the man in the ranks. I mean, by this, this kind of event, it's exactly the relaxing thing. of course. So, jetzt left dress. So, Confederate volley after volley. A lot of Confederates still here behind the fence. And the Union moving ever closer to the Confederate line. Leaving dead brothers behind as they do it. And they've gotten a little scattered here. Second Delaware has pulled away from the main line. And you hear the huzzah. The Confederates are now engaged. 22 minutes left in this battle. Confusion in both lines. Yeah, the Union now dressing to the left, so Toby and his boys getting back to the center. Oh my gosh. And the 51st, the, the poor serpents taking all of that Confederate fire. <laughs> Confederates are mercilessly into the Union ranks. And there's the answer. Actually, not much casualties. And here, guys, you see. Wooden fans have some impact. Well, I mean, uh, what was impacted more in that volley was the dirt. A lot of those rounds coming in low. Oh my god, those weren't low. Jesus. Confederates almost wiping out the Union with that volley. 50 seconds, about the only one left. There's very few 2nd Delaware and 51st as they come pouring in. Kept some uh, bouncing, uh, bouncing shots from the fence line over there. So I just angle. <laughs> oh, it's very interesting. Some of the Union refilling their ranks now. Guys pouring in from the spawn. They are close here. That that is one advantage here for the go. Union. Oh, and here come the Confederates. Hey. Confederates coming out. Charging straight in, and here's the counter charge by the Conf uh, by the Union. Turning to a massacre. Come on, Copper. Here, dead, dead. The thing. Union has it. Pretty amazing what? considering how many Confederates were still alive. True, but Confederates really suffered heavy, heavy losses in that uh, Union. The devastated Union bowling up for their chart. Both teams engaged, so we've tied it up with 20 minutes to go. And the Confederates are pretty much losing the point of contention just through decay. And yeah, but I think they, they don't care about the point of contention. Yeah, I agree People. with you. Hey, another cheer by Silver Smurfin for the Union victory there. Thank you for that, buddy. We do appreciate it. The channel is growing every week due to contributions like yourself. 
That's right. So yeah, the Union in a little bit of a disarray. There's not a lot of Union left. But enough to win that battle. More Union than CSA. More Union than CSA. Yeah, I think the only guy I saw survive that was this flag bear here, Hurricane, Private Hurricane of the uh, 18th North Carolina Tar Heels. Shout out back. to Private Hurricane. Yeah, no one's shooting at him this, this week, though. That'll be a different story next week. So the Union have the field. Right face. Bringing some spit and technique, so. Yeah. Forward. Forward. Arch. Forward. I'm sorry, I'm not that fluent with the battalion. Right mass. shoulder shift, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Winters right and, uh, right and Richter right getting the boys turned and moving toward the fence. Now they're going directly toward the point of contention. Oh, interesting. Man, I'm surprised my life. So maybe they do care about it after all. It's hard to say. But they're going to be lined up in this field when the Confederates get back. Now, typically on a normal match... No, he's turned away now. So they've... Uh, five files right, and they're going back up the hill. Uh, so, reading the minds of these officers, almost impossible at this point. But uh, <clears throat> typically on this map, during a normal battle, uh, by about this time in the battle, you're going to have a lot of charges toward this point of contention. It gets really bloody really fast. Oh, Alright, yeah. Frank is back. Company, uh, Usually that's the point where the, where the USA um, attacks the time. So, yeah. I've seen this battle change hands in the last minute. It's, it's pretty amazing, really. We have one in the Hall of Fame that uh, it, it just changed hands over and over and over again. It basically came down to who charged last, is who was, who was going to win. So the Union trying to get back into formation. They're a little bit, uh, a little bit scattered right now. So we'll see if the Confederates get a chance to get back in time. Hurricane's about the only Confederate up here at this moment, trying to find his men. He's completely lost. He's just running out in the middle of the corn. <laughs> uh, he's going to end up in uh, Virginia if he keeps at this pace. Of course, it's easy to see when you have the uh, bird's eye view that we enjoy. But as a guy with a flag running through the corn, I'm sure he doesn't know where the hell he is right now. All right, so the Union down in about the position where the Irish Brigade made it uh, before they got completely massacred uh, on this field. Right down in front of the road here. Confederates seem to be taking their time to get back in order. Six minutes. Do you have any suggestion who lost more? You know, it's hard to say because they're both engaged at this point, and the Union have really taken a lot of casualties with the musket, but that last charge, I think, really hurt the Confederates. So it's going to be yeah, close. I, I agree. I would say as well that right now, CSI has slightly uh, taken more total casualties than the Union because, you know, at the, at the start, we have that Union uh, volleys that devastated the, the Confederate lines. After it was the Confederates' advantage, they had uh, uh, the better position. They changed to the to the right of the Union line. They had the better positions as well, going in. And in that last charge, there was a lot of Confederate casualties again. It's almost even. I would say lightly, slightly more CSA casualties in USA right now. But we shall see. Yeah, it's hard to say. And I believe uh, the attacker gets more tickets on this uh, map as well. Oh, Union moving toward the road now, and the Confederates have entered the cornfield. So the Union getting right on that fence. They're going to try to take away the road from the Confederates. So by the time the Confederates get out to this fence, they may be surprised to see the whole Union army waiting for them. And incredibly new. 
<clears throat> it's interesting because they're not right against the fence. There's they're a few paces away. That's something I've noticed a lot of the uh, successful units do as well, Schimmel, is when someone is actually charging them over a fence, they don't go right up to the fence and start stabbing through it. They actually back away a few paces uh, to give themselves some room. Exactly. Galadin's infantry is it uh, called actually in uh, an exercise. And, and it's about, um, as you said, um, putting some space between the fence and you, so the guys attacking have to um, step over the fence. And in the in the time, actually, when they are stepping over the fence, it's a perfect uh, position um, for the defenders, a perfect moment to stab them, you know, while they're crossing the fence. Oh, and look at the Confederates. This is very uh, interesting. They've gone all the way to the left-hand side of their range, and they're going to come into the field from the left-hand side. They're actually on the Yankee right flank right now. And I don't... They enjoy the rear situation. They don't have to defend the cap. So, yeah, they're not really... Yeah, some, some interesting strategy here by uh, Mr. Greenberg. Always, uh, always on the flank is Greenberg and the, uh, and the 8th Alabama. I think the Union has finally seen it. They're starting to move now. By files right, so they're coming square with the actual Confederate lines here. And we'll see if the Confederates use that tree and, and the stones as cover. Now they're just coming right through here. Yeah, let's go a bit further personal on Greenberg. But the Union trying to line up directly on to keep their left flank on the fence. That's gonna give half their line some cover. And actually both these armies are gonna be shooting through that little curve in the fence there. So this should be interesting. So almost simultaneous volleys here. Not a lot of guys dropping. I think most of those are gonna hit the wood fence. There's a couple. Whew. Confederate fire finding their marks in certain parts of the line. And you hear the huzzah. Confederates now taking losses. But again, with the Union getting more tickets in this battle, it doesn't necessarily mean that the Confederates have more casualties. Yeah, that's true. Especially now, man. This left side of the uh, Union line, the 52nd, really taking heavy casualties here, which is surprising me since they do have the majority of the fence to their front. Right wing loader. And the, and the rear rank. Press left. Right. Left. Hey. Second coming. Second coming. Hey. Hmm. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Left wing. At least now, from this position, they're able to get that smoke to clear away. Ooh, a lot of Union bullets hitting the dirt right there. And the Confederates are moving again. <clears throat> this time to the right and into the road, or at least getting right on the fence line. Confederates stacking up on the fence line now. Aiming at the Union. Fire. So lots of bullets coming in, but I didn't see a lot of guys dropping. Of course, the left side of this Union line completely decimated here. You can see the bodies in the blood. I sucked Lieutenant Lemmy oh. and Todd said, we were getting some Dixieland. <clears throat> Man, the Confederates' fire is very accurate. They're really knocking down a lot of Union here. Right wing loaded. Keen out. Fire. Check it out. Fire. 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 F
All right, so Frank has called for a ceasefire and shoulder of arms. So they're about to move out. Uh, yeah. Oh, my There's God. Yeah. There would be fewer Union to move out now. <laughs> he knows the Confederates have them uh, in their sights. And he's actually turning toward the Confederate line here. A by files left. Seems like Greenberg has dropped some smoke grenades. <laughs> so Frank picking up the pace here. His men moving at a quicker pace. <clears throat> getting up the hill. Getting away from the fence. Guess he feels like that fence was hurting his men more than helping. All the while under the gaze or the... Uh, the eyes of the Confederates. So we'll see if another Confederate volley comes in before the Union can get set. Oh, that volley was devastating for the CSA. Great volley by the Union there. Second Delaware showing why they are one of the rising stars in the UEC. So Frank's got his guys in a good position here, even though they are exposed. And the Confederates are moving again. Ooh, a lot of guys falling before they hit that fence. If I may quote you, there are a lot less guys to move out with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's hard to hit a moving target, so the Confederates have crossed the road, and they're into the cornfield. Oh, there's a lot of Union to shoot. And they're coming down the fence line here. So Todd has stopped them there, and now the Union turning to face the Confederates. Here we go. Here's that uh, Union arrow formation again. And some of the Union in the rocks. A lot of Confederate bullets coming in there. The Confederates still are not in position. Union are. And they're starting to deliver lead into the Confederate lines. Hey. Confederates ready to give it back to them. Oh, large numbers of Confederates dropping on that volley there. Some of the best, best individual shooters I've ever seen in this game, and when you combine them together in a battalion, you really get a lot of massive casualties in one volley. Yeah. You can see the Confederate lines just completely decimated here. Bodies laying everywhere, corn on the ground. Yeah. Confederate situation looking dire at the moment. And the Union exposed in the open field. Flag bearer going down. Picked it back up. And another volley coming in from the Union. Fire. Ouch. I'll write your mama, boy. A lot of dead Confederates here. What are they going to do? Are they going to stay in this position? Mm. You hear the fallback command? Right as one part is falling back, the Alabama step each is pouring in as reinforcements. You see them? What? was by each other. I'm surprised the developers haven't fixed that, uh, the rebel flag bug that's going on. It's been there for a couple weeks now. And the Union moved right up to the fence line. So they're standing on the, near the point of contention, and it's not going their way. So I don't know if it's turned off or what is happening here, but I don't think they care. Has to be. Well, they're a little bit to the left of it, but they're kind of on top of it, too. <laughs> it's hard to say. All right, they're going right up to the fence now. And here you go. Now they've, they've actually entered the area, and the point of contention is bleeding toward the Union. So with five minutes left, I think Frank has decided to just win this battle. And the Confederates, you see them there in the corn moving around. And the Union sees them too. They're about to send them some lead. 
Nope. They pulled back. Great call. You don't want to have an empty musket when the whole Confederate army comes running this way. What's up? Oh, you see, Union is taking a cap for Yeah, we're about to have a counterattack here. If the Confederates yeah. don't get up here. That's true. Maybe that's what they want. They just want to extend the round. Yeah. Uh, and here come the Union reinforcements pouring in. I, I think that um, the spawn point for the Union really gives them a great advantage on this battlefield. What do you think, Shummel? I'm not certain who has to learn their way. But yeah, the it's not it's least you're not running through the corn blind <laughs> actually i have looked a bit out it looks like to the point the uh, union way is longer than the csa way is that right it looks like like this way so actually when you as a csa you walk through uh, the cornfield in cover almost until you reach the fence line as the union your reinforcements coming through the open field. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I know as a new player how confusing cornfields were, not knowing where you were or where you were going. <laughs> it takes a while for a new player to understand these maps, but we're about to take the point of contention here. And there you have it, the counterattack. 6.55 now in the match. The Confederates are heading this way. Let's see if they can take it back. Here we go. And the Confederates have reached. Touch. They've reached the fence, and it looks like they're going to go right back across the road one more time. You see them. Oh, yes, I do. Come on, go for a charge. <laughs> Streaming across the road. Are they going to go for a charge? Union they not are. turning the line, but shooting into the ranks of the Confederates, hitting a lot of dirt. I didn't see a lot of Confederates going down there, and it looks, looks like the Confederates oh, have. Oh, damn. That's not bloody. Here come the charge, and the Confederates are in a better position. Union facing the wrong way. Confederates charging in to the flank. Oh, damn. So this time, the Union not able to lay a lot of lead onto the Confederates as they charge. Actually, a lot of Union left. This Confederate still streaming in to the top of the field here. That's Hog in the 8th Florida swinging around. You know, Union can come from different sides. And the Union starting yeah, to envelop. And Confederates are breaking. Wow. This could be it. With the Confederates breaking in the counterattack in effect. I wonder what that does to the win. Because my understanding, Schimmel, is that if the defending army is breaking and the attacking army takes the point, it's over. Yeah, but we are in counter attack right now, so it, it's not it's not counting. That's funny. So this actually gives a reprieve to the Confederates here, even though they are breaking. Yep. They've got a little bit more time. If they recapture it, they are at engaged. Absolutely. I like that mechanic a lot. That's why, for example, my strategy is usually as the um, attacking team relying on the enemy tickets, not, not the cap point, you see, because cap point, if it's retaken, you lose almost all your progress you did before. But if you reduce the enemy tickets to, to a bragging and then take the point, you have it, you see? Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's the thing. But we are not playing under normal circumstances over there. It's a battalion event, so... Well, and a lot of times, you know, trying to employ that strategy, you'll find that uh, you'll find yourself breaking before you can get the enemy if, if uh, 
if the fire is against you that day. So it's tough. It's true. <laughs> we got one little confederate here in the road. Who said that we have a, a sergeant rancher holic? L. Johnson. Meaning? I think uh, L. L. Johnson from the 18 North Carolina got a late message that the charge was in, and he's just now here by himself, facing down the whole correct, uh, the whole Union Army. And Richter <laughs> has got him in his sights. Yeah. Oh, he came for the flag, brave man. But there is. Let me hear again. There goes the Confederate train. First men have reached <laughs> points. The last ones even uh, crossed the fence to the cornfield. You see that line pulling Completely in? Completely stretched out, but they're coming right back across again. You see Lemuel Todd bringing his men, Captain Harris right Union behind him. Reinforcements, all right. Union, Union is going to win this from my point of view. There are, are reinforcements coming and Confederates pulling in one by uh, yeah, one after the other. Yeah, massive. Uh, they have fence now and they're shooting in the trap. But like you said, the Union have a lot of troops getting back here. Are they loaded? Yeah, are they ready? But, but positioning is almost everything, and the Confederates have it right now. It's a better position. They do indeed, and you see that blue line bleeding away, and the Confederates oh, under yes. hog going to the right. Straight up in and front of the Union. Now I'm going to see... Oh, my God! The 8th Florida... Completely demolished in one volley, but they did it. They're getting that red line coming back, and now the Union is taking losses. Yeah, Union simply has the resources. Continue this uh, end off here. Yeah, the Confederates are just going to bleed the Union away man by man until they completely kill them. But those Union volleys are incredible. Greenberg watching a lot of his men go down. That's a fucking bloody lane, but it's our bloody lane. You heard it as well? Yeah. Hold for Dixie. Give him hell. Oh, there comes the Union. And the charge is in effect. Here come the Union. Streaming down the hill. Will they be able to get over the fence and hit the Confederates? A large portion of them. And you hear them, both sides now taking losses. The Confederates have countered the counterattack. 238 left in the match. And the Confederates holding on to a fragile lead here. They've really extended to the maximum. <laughs> you have to say it. Man. There's still one private here, stabbing folks in the back. Sergeant Terry's here. And Fritch goes down. The Union have actually taken this position. Incredible. Union has it. So two minutes left, and they're standing on the point. Private Scholar, still alive. They're bouncing in and out. So off against Terry. No, Terry. Oh, I see him. He told him to go home. <laughs> Come on, Scholar. Why are you running? Face your destiny. <laughs> Confederates don't run, especially 8th Alabama Confederates. <laughs> At least he's alive. Sounds like the guys are having fun with each other there. They are, they are. And the red line actually coming back. Strange. Oh, no, it's not, because look at all these Confederates pouring back into the point of contention with one minute left. They're going to win this battle, but, oh, my God, that's a large amount of Union on the top of that hill. I think the Confederates have lost their belly for the battalion battle and just want to win this match. 49 seconds left, and they're all piled up at the point of contention. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. 
Here come the Union. This is what it looks like when a whole battalion charges down the hill. Look at them coming. There's Private Scholar again. Oh, there comes it. He gets charged. The Confederates trying to uh, lay some of these guys down before they can get over the fence, but a lot of Union over the fence already. And here they come. A lot of blue bellies, but the Confederates are bringing in reinforcements as well as we speak. As the Union. And who's it going to be? It's overtime. Overtime. And you hear taking losses. A lot of Confederates here, but the line oh, is ticking away. Will the Union be able to hang on to this overtime? Seems so. Yeah, that red line is bleeding. It, it keeps going back and forth, back and forth. Oh, that red dot's growing. Confederates are about to win. And the Union sees it. They get into the road. Incredible. Oh, man, the Union have taken back the point of contention. Confederate flags laying on the ground. The red line bleeding away from the Confederates. The Union might be able to win this battle after all. When the Union takes, I, I, I think the point has changed uh, positions, uh, has changed four times, I guess. First time CSA uh, have it, uh, first time change was CSA, uh, USA took it, then CSA took it back. Then, oh no, it's the third time, you're going to take it again, I, I, I bet. <clears throat> Three times changing hands. Pretty incredible. Even in a battalion event, these guys cannot help themselves. Oh, here they are. They're back. And the red dot is growing for the Confederates. This might be all it takes. But the red line still bleeding away. Incredible. But there are Union uh, reinforcements on the way as well. And you see that blue line starting to grow. Confederates have got to do it now. Last stand for the Confederates. So for players that don't know, what does last stand mean for a Confederate? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Uh, last stand means you have no more reinforcements. Everyone who is in the field is in the field. Everyone who dies stays dead. So pretty much like real life. <laughs> and what that means for the Confederates is with that blue line growing and a lot of Yankees in this road, this looks like certain defeat for the Confederates. But nobody told Greenberg he's back with some of the 8th Alabama and 8th Florida trying to hang on. But there are just too many Union here. Uh, Green Greenberg is Alabama's German Legion. It's not going to run that up easily. And there's a lot of them coming this way, okay. but it's just too little too late. And that's it. A Union victory. Look at the casualties. Yeah. All right. So we have one win for the CSA and one win for the USA today. Well, that's a great weekend, right? <laughs> it is. It is. All right, guys. If you like this battle, hit the like button. Consider subscribing. Write in the comments. We love to hear from you guys in the comments. So... Uh, thanks once again, Schimmel, for being here, man. It's always a blast. Of course, it's an honor. By the way, if you want to check out some of Wright's talks with all the different company leaders, uh, feel free to check out my channel. Yeah, it's a great oh, yeah. channel. We'll have a, a link in the description below as well, so you can check that out. Schimmel does deep dives with different officers in the uh, War of Rights community. It's a great, a great listen. Uh, until next time, my name is Jehovah, and I'll catch you later. Bye. Goodbye.